So first thing we need to make sure we have open is the animations panel at the bottom here. And if you don't have one of those, just go to window and then check animation. We have ours open already, so that's all good. I'm going to add a new animation and call that menu animation. I'm going to click on that. And what you see is that it activates our timeline here. I'm going to start adding things to my timeline. So I'm going to get my video button, click on track and then click video button. I'm going to do the same for levels. I'm going to add my gallery button as well. Get the hotspots button, materials button, and then finally my exit button. Now it's important to make sure that the hierarchy of the timeline is the same as the hierarchy in your hierarchy. Um, so I just need to move my exit button to the top and that'll be the same now. So I'm gonna highlight all these in my timeline, click track, and then get visibility. At zero, zero, I wanna make sure the visibility for all of these is hidden. Whoops. So now you see on my canvas, everything is hidden. I wanna scrub forward to 0 0.05 seconds on my timeline and then change them all to be visible. And then again, in our canvas, they're all visible again. Also at 0 0.05, I'm gonna to add to the track and I wanna get a render opacity. At 0 0.05, I wanna make sure the render opacity is zero for all of these. There we go, and you can see it's zero in our canvas. And then I'm gonna scrub forward to 0 0.35 in our timeline and then change render opacity to be one. There we go. So if I play this now, you see it's changing the opacity over 0 0.35 seconds. And what I actually want to do is offset the opacity slightly so it kind of gives it a staggered effect. So I'm going to go to my video button, which is at the bottom. And I just want to reiterate the importance of having the hierarchy in the timeline be the same as it is in your button container. Uh, it'll just help us offset this easier. So I'm actually going to go to my levels button gonna grab the render opacity keyframes and then just shift them forward by 0 0.1 a second. The next one needs to be shifted forward by 0 0.2 seconds. The hotspot button needs to be shifted by 0 0.3. Material needs to go forward 0 0.4. And finally the exit needs to go forward to 0 0.5 seconds. So if I play this from the start now, you'll see this slightly offset and it gives it a staggered animation effect, which is pretty cool, I think. Here we go, let's compile and let's save that. Now let's jump into the event graph. And in my event graph, I need to go ahead and create a new function. The new function is gonna be called open menu. And here I wanna get the menu animation we just made. And then of that, I'm gonna get a play animation, connect that to my open menu. And then after this, I'm gonna get the menu button. And then after that, get the active button function we made, connect that to our play animation. And let's just highlight this and comment this, set menu button active state. And then let's comment this animation as well. Right click, create comment, play menu animation forward. Here we go, compile and save. And then I'm going to duplicate the function and I'm going to call that close menu. Let's change this comment so that it says reverse and then change the play animation play mode to be reverse. This one, I need to of course get the inactive button state and then connect that to my play animation. And then change the comment to be inactive state. Here we go, let's compile and save. Uh, so basically what's happening, when we call the function, it's going to play our animation backwards to look like it's closing, and then it's going to set the menu button to be the inactive button state. For our open menu, it's just going to play the animation forward to make it look like it's opening, and then set the menu button to be the active state. All right, now back in our main event graph, I need to get the menu button on click state. And off that, I need to get me a multi-gate. So for the out zero, I need to go and find me the open menu function we just made, connect that to out zero, and our close menu will go to the out one. I'm gonna right click here and then get me a add custom event, call that reset menu, 
and then connect that to the reset and the multi-gate. Also check loop. I'm going to open the close menu function once again. I need to add some more code in here. So at the end, I'm just going to get me the button state function. And then after that, I am going to get the uh, reset, uh, reset menu function we just made. And let's comment this, just be reset menu. Cool, let's compile and let's save. We can close that for now. So basically what happens when we click the menu button, it's gonna run the open menu code. When we click again, it's gonna run the close menu code. And then in here we have a reset menu state that takes us back here and resets our multigate and loops it. So we can keep reusing our out zero and out one. Let's play the test now. Oops, I have forgotten one more thing. I need to make all these buttons uh, hidden by default. So right at the bottom, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna get an event construct. Now I just need to get all of my buttons. Here we go. And then just off one of these, I need to get the set visibility and then connect all of those up to the target. And I just need to change that to be hidden. All right, now off another one, let's get the set render opacity and then connect that up to our set visibility and then leave the value to be zero. And just connect all these up to the target once again. There we go, and then connect the event construct. Uh, let's go ahead and highlight all this and then comment it as usual. Set initial states to be hidden. There we go. Let's compile and save and let's play. Oh, what's going on here? I think I've done this wrong. Let's double check. Ah, so I've actually gotten the wrong widgets. Let's delete these bottom two. I need to get the button. I accidentally got the actual widget for that. Connect it to the target. Oh, I spelled button wrong for this. Let me just change that. You know, add an extra T. All right, here we go, back in our graph. Um, we just need to connect that to the render opacity now. Let's compile and save. Let's play. Here we go. Uh, actually, we need to do one for the exit button. So let's go and find the exit button, drag that into our target for set visibility, and then drag that to our render opacity. Compile, save, and play. And everything is hidden by default now, finally. So we press our menu, it'll play the animation. And then we can press it again, it'll play the animation in reverse to close. Open, close, go. Looks perfect. Now there's one more thing we need to do. Uh, I'm just gonna go into my button states. And then in here for my sequence, I'm gonna right click and insert a pin above. Just gonna move this down a little bit. Then I'm gonna copy this code right here, starting from widget switcher. And then the branch, copy that, paste it above. I'm gonna change the equal value to be zero. And then I'm gonna connect my branch up to my sequence. Now I just need to grab my buttons once again. Uh, actually, it's probably easier if I just get them from variables. And there we go. Now with one of these, I just need to drag off the inactive core function and then just connect that up to the target for each. Connect that to the true branch. Just move this up to tidy it up. Uh, so basically what this is, is when the active widget index is zero, which is the uh, empty widget blank state, when that is zero, then it's just gonna make all of our buttons uh, the inactive button states. So let's highlight all this, right click, and then create comment once again. And this is gonna be set inactive button states. All right, cool, compile, save. And I just need to add one more piece of code back in our event graph. Let's go to the close menu function. Let's shift the reset menu across. And then I just need to get the widget switcher 
And then after that, I just need to sit active widget index, and that needs to be zero. Connect these up now. Put this across a little bit more. And then I can comment that. So basically what this is, is obviously setting it back to our blank state. And that'll allow all of our buttons to also be the inactive states. Compile, save, and play. So we can open our menu. We can close our menu. Cool. And then if we have an active widget and then close, it'll reset it back to the zero, which is the blank state. Cool, looks like it's all working correctly. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next episode.